Well, this begins chapter 7, which is built-in functions, and these functions can be applied to any of the data structures that we've seen in the past. They can be applied, many of them, to uh, vectors, to uh, matrices, to arrays. This chapter concerns built-in functions, which are those that are built into R that you can access, and there are hundreds and hundreds of these. That's why um, there won't be a GUI. There's just too many to uh, list out in a uh, graphical user interface. You've got to just get to kind of know them, and we'll, we'll survey them here in this section. The next chapter concerns um, user-written functions, which are functions that are not built into R, but you may want to uh, write on your own. So starting up at the top here, the syntax for a function is you will call it by putting in the function name and then the first argument and the second argument and the third argument. These arguments are sometimes called parameters. The next thing is to type the uh, function name if you're ever interested in seeing its source code. So if you simply type the name of the function, you will see how it was written. Third, the function name and all of its arguments are case sensitive. So just like object names were case sensitive, it matters if you use capital letters or small letters, etc. It's also true that function names and the arguments are case sensitive. A call to its a call to a function has arguments that can be accessed by either position or name. So all of these arguments are going to have um, names associated with them, and you can type those names in and pin down the uh, argument in that fashion, or you can refer to them by position, that is, first argument, second argument, third argument, etc. And we'll see uh, examples of that going forward of uh, using that. Many of these built-in functions have default arguments that are assumed, and we already encountered that in the uh, matrix function. The matrix function had the by row argument, which was assumed to be false. You had to set it to true if you wanted to put the uh, rows in um, of a matrix rather than putting columns in. When you're writing your own functions, there are certain function names that you want to avoid. For example, um, the C function. We've seen that with defining a vector. You wouldn't want to call your own function C. Or even to have a variable name, name C is a little bit confusing. Q is another one. That's how you quit out of R. So you'd want to avoid that. T turns out to be the matrix transpose, so you'd want to avoid that as a function name. And then some of the programming um, constructs like if and while and return. So there are some function names that are just a good idea to avoid. So in this particular part of chapter 7, this again is going to be broken into pieces, I am just going to put in an x value here and let's go with 3, 0, negative 4, and 2. That should be just fine for a vector x. You can see up here in the upper right it just got defined 3, 0, negative 4, and 2 and this is a vector. And we're just going to run through a bunch of the built-in functions that might apply to this. So there it is, 3, 0, negative 4, and 2. First thing you can do is you can sum up the values in x. When you add those values up, you get a positive 1. If you want to sum the squares of the values of x, this time you're going to get 9 plus 16 plus 4, and that turns out to be 29. If you want to find the cumulative sum, of the values in the vector x. Notice the cumulative sum as you go across here is 3. 3 plus 0 is again 3. 3 minus 4 is a negative 1. And then negative 1 plus 2 gives you a positive 1. So cumulative sum can be useful. Product of x. In this case, that 0 will wipe everything out. So the product of those four elements is a 0. There's also cumulative product of the vector x, and in this case, 3, and then the 0 wipes out the remaining um, values in that vector. There is a minimum function. If you want the smallest value of x, it is negative 4. There is a maximum function. The largest value is positive 3. There is also a cumulative 
minimum function and it will give you the cumulative minimum, the kind of the running minimum as you go from left to right in the vector. There is a cumulative maximum function of x and it will also go from left to right giving you the cumulative maximum. If you want the difference of the values in x, there they are. Now I've got to be a little bit careful here because I see I am running off the page. There is x and if you look at the differences as you go from 3 to 0, that's going down 3. As you go from 0 to negative 4, that's going down 4. And when you go from negative 4 to 2, you're going up 6. So x is a vector of length 4, whereas the differences here will be a vector of length 3. So let me go ahead and clear the screen here. I'm going to do that with the uh, broom here. And we're going to type x all over again and go through a few more. There is also a function that will find the mean of x. So the mean of those values turns out to be 1 fourth. That was the sum, which was 1, divided by the length, which is 4. So you get 0.25. If you want to find the median of x, now that's easy with an odd number of elements. But since there is an even number of elements, it'll take the two that are in the middle which are the 0 and the 2, and it will average them to get you a 1 for the median. If you want to calculate the uh, variance, and this is the unbiased version of the variance, you get 9.5. If you want to find the standard deviation, one way of doing that is to take the square root of variance of x, and you get 3.1. However, uh, a quicker way to do this is there is a function SD, which stands for standard deviation and it will give you that same value. If you want to find the range of x, that will be a vector which has the smallest value first and the largest value last, so there is the range. If you combine the diff and the range function, and they can be nested in this fashion, just as we did with the square root of the variance of x when you say what is the difference of the range. Now it'll take this negative 4, 3 vector and say the difference there is 7. If you want a stem and leaf plot, it's not too interesting with just four data values, but the stem function will give you that. And then finally, let me uh, once again clear the screen with this broom function. There are certain functions out there that will take two vectors. So here is our x. And let's set y equal to an a four element vector. Let's go negative 5, 2, 7, negative 1. Let's go with that for y. So now you can see there's the x vector and there's the y vector. There is a function called pmin of x and y. And what this function will do is it will find the minimum, but it will do it pairwise. So it'll look at 3 and negative 5 and pick off the smaller. It'll look at 2 and 0, pick off the smaller. Negative 4 and 7, pick off the smaller. And 2 and negative 1 and display the smaller. So that's pmin. You won't be surprised. There's also a pmax of x and y. And this will always give you the larger but pairwise. So 3 here, followed by 2, followed by 7, followed by 2. If you were to type the variance function here and put in two arguments, so rather than having one argument where it calculates the sample variance, now what it's going to do is it is going to print the sample covariance between the elements in the vector x and y, and that's negative 15.25. If you then type COR of x and y, it'll actually calculate the sample correlation of the values of x and y, and that turns out to be negative 0.97. So there's a high negative correlation between the values in the two groups. That's it for now with some of the preliminary functions. We'll pick this up on the next segment.